Some scripture scholars will point out to us that the steward in today's gospel passage is not really cheating his master. Whenever he changes the debt from a hundred measures of oil to 50 or a hundred cores of wheat to 80 cores of wheat, basically all he's doing is taking off his own profit margin. Nice, huh? Kind of takes the problem away. This may be true, but it, it really doesn't explain why he stands accused of squandering his master's property. Or, for that matter, why generations have refer, referred to this steward as the unjust steward. Other scripture scholars will tell us that that a parable is different than an allegory in that a parable really only points to one area of connection and that what we should take from today's parable is not all the, the details, but rather just as the steward in the parable was prudent when it came to his future prospects that, that you and I need to be prudent when it comes to our future prospect. In spiritual terms, that means that we better be careful or we might end up doing much worse than digging ditches. And that's nice too. As a matter of fact, I can be comfortable with that. The problem for me is this. As I get older, I am most uncomfortable when I, as a sinner, stand before God's eternal word and I feel comfortable, that's a problem. I'm not saying that there aren't things in today's gospel passage that even on the surface don't challenge us. For example, Jesus tells us that, that while those who are honest in small matters will be honest in great matters, he also says that those who are dishonest, untrustworthy in small matters will be so with great matters. And this is something we can take to our examine of conscience. We can, we can examine in our own lives, how do we behave in seemingly insignificant matters, insignificant to us? For example, what do we do when the cashier gives us a couple extra bucks at the cash register by mistake? What do we do? What do you, we do when we find something that doesn't belong to us? What do we do when we are filling out our taxes? Is there any such thing as a small white lie? Don't they seem to grow? So we need to examine ourselves. Certainly our first read today from the prophet Amos challenges us. We certainly don't want to be like those that the prophet is prophesying against, reminding them that God sees what they are doing. A people so caught up in profit, their love of money, that their minds are far from God on the Sabbath. Their minds are, are already thinking about how they're going to go back to work. They were serving mammon. Prophet. Certainly we aren't like them. I mean, do we trample on the needy? Do we destroy the poor of the land? Maybe we feel comfortable with this reading too. And yet with our global economy, with the way the markets work. We have to examine ourselves. We have to examine on how our lifestyle affect the rest of the world. If I were to ask you where you got your shoes, what country do they come from? I think that it would be amazing if even 5% of our shoes came from this country. How? 
do our economics affect the rest of the world? Are we in effect by our participation in unjust systems, trampling on the needy? Does our market possibly even destroy the poor of the land? A distant land, but brothers and sisters of ours nonetheless? This we have to examine. Returning to the steward in today's gospel passage, I think it would do us a disservice to explain away the parable in a way that it no longer challenges us. No doubt this unjust steward should not be emulated in the way he repents. He's doing so for purely selfish reasons. He's been caught. He's been accused. Judgment day is upon him. But at least he changes his ways. At least in his brokenness he does something that relieves the suffering of others. Whenever we hear the story of a steward, we should recognize that that you and I, we are also stewards. And just as he stands in, he is committed and is accused of squandering the master's property, we too have to look at what we have done with the master's property. As stewards, we recognize that everything we have, even the things we earn by the sweat of our brows, are ultimately a gift from God. And have we squandered those gifts, those opportunities? To examine our, our time, talent, and treasure. As I look back over my life, I just think of how much time I've, I've wasted. How much resources I've wasted. And yet you and I come to this altar where Christ holds nothing back from us. God holds nothing back from us. He spends his entire being laying himself bare, giving us everything, his very presence. And so the unjust steward challenges us. Maybe Maybe we stand, having been judged, and respond out of, out of fear. At least it'll lead to change. But hopefully, as we gather here at this Eucharist, we will recognize how good and merciful is our loving Father, how much we have been blessed. And just as He is kind and merciful, forgiving our debts, just as he is, is compassionate and loving, we, as his children, will reflect those qualities and will not be dragged before him, accused of squandering his gifts.